Good day students, welcome to mathgoodserve.com. In this clip we're going to be going over how to use the unit circle from memory. Alright, we're going to get started by taking a look at the coordinates that are associated with the reference angles that are used in the formulation of the points in the unit circle. Okay, so you want to recollect the following fact. First of all, you need to know your reference angle. So we start from zero degrees, you have zero, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, and then 90 degrees. Okay? Now, um, what are the coordinates that are associated with these angles? Uh, starting from zero, you have one for the x coordinate and 0 for the y coordinate. So you basically have the pattern 0, 1, 0 as a memory aid to help you remember where to start. At the end, 90 degrees, you achieve a reversal of this coordinate. You have 0 for the x coordinate and 1 for the y coordinate. Alright, so we have two coordinates down, three more to go. So going from 0 to 1, Think about one, two, three, your con consecutive numbers, and then divide everything by two. And then you take the square root of the num numerator, okay? So the square root of one is just one, so we don't have to put a square root here. Put the square root on the two and the square root on the three, all right? So zero, one half, root two over two, root three over two, and then one. Over here, you just copy down these three numbers in reverse order, okay? So one half, root two over two, and then root three over two. So there goes the coordinate pairs that um, you have on the reference angles on the unit circle. Okay, so these are the points that show up on the unit circle. All you just have is a variation of the signs um, of the x's or the y's or both of them, all right? Now, with that in mind, let's take a look at an example problem. Let's say you were to find the exact value of all six trig um, functions Um, for the given angle. So let's say the angular measure on the consideration is theta equals negative 315 degrees. Okay, so first things first, we want to identify what the reference angle is. Okay, what's the reference angle for 315 degrees? Now, if we can identify the reference angle, then we can um, use the coordinate pairs that we covered over here to determine the x coordinate and the y coordinate. And then we'll finish off with the um, unit circle ratios. All right, so to help us determine this, we're going to sketch the unit circle, not the entire thing, but just the part that's relevant to this particular problem. So we have our x and y axis drawn. All right, and then we'll draw ourselves a nice little circle. And then let's identify what where 315 is located and consequently the um, reference angle. You notice this is a negative angle of measure. Starting from zero, what direction do we rotate? Remember when you um, are rotating downwards or clockwise, you're going to be subtracting. That's the negative direction for the unit circle. When you rotate counterclockwise, that's positive, that's when you add. Alrighty, so since we have a negative angle of measure, we're going to be rotating clockwise. 0 minus 90, this takes us to the first. Um, negative y, so this is negative 90 degrees right here. Keep on going, this is negative 180. Keep on going, this is negative 270. Too big, keep on going. Takes us back here. 0 is good terminal with negative 360 degrees. 
which is too big, so we can determine that negative 315 resides in quadrant 1. Okay? Now, from the unit circle, the assumption here is that you already have it memorized. You know that you have three points in quadrant 1. Okay, so the question is which point does 315 fall on? Does it fall on the point that's closest to the x-axis, namely the 30-degree reference angle? Does it fall in the center, the 45-degree angle, or does it fall on the point that's closest to the y, the 60-degree reference angle? So we can do the calculation here. What is the angle of separation between 315 and 360, between negative 315 and negative 360. That is the reference angle. So to find the reference angle, we're just simply going to compute the angle of separation, negative 315 minus negative 360, and see what the reference angle is. Okay, so here we have the absolute value of negative 315 plus 360. That gives us 40, the absolute value of 45. Our reference angle is 45 degrees. So that's dead in the center, okay? So we know the location of negative 315 now. So negative 315 resides right here, okay? Now what are the coordinate pairs that's associated with this point? Since you're, in the, since you're in quadrant 1, your x's and y's are going to be positive, okay? So if we look at the points that we wrote earlier, we're looking at the 45 degree combination. If you have this memorized, you automatically know what it is. You don't have to think too much about it. So for uh, 315, negative 315, which is um, coterminal with 45 degrees, both which have a reference angle of 45 degrees, we have the coordinate pair root 2 over 2 comma root 2 over 2. Okay? Alright, so what we're going to do is extract the coordinate that's associated with this angle of measure, negative 315. The coordinate is root 2 over 2 comma root 2 over 2. This is the x and this is the y. Now we're going to use the unit circle ratios to finish off the problem. First question is sine. What is sine? Sine theta, y sin. Remember that to help you remember, remember that sine theta is y, y sin. So sine theta is a y coordinate. That tells us that sine of negative 315 is a y coordinate which is root 2 over 2. What about its reciprocal? The reciprocal of sine is cosecant, not secant, okay? S goes with C. Secant is 1 over y, okay? So to determine what cosecant negative 315 is, we're simply going to reciprocate the y coordinate to get 2 over root 2. Now, since we cannot have a radical in the denominator, we'll proceed to rationalize the denominator by multiplying the numerator and denominator by the um, by root 2. Okay? So that gives us 2 root 2. Root 2 times root 2 is root 4, which is just 2. The 2's divide out. We end up with root 2. Now let's move on to the cosine piece. Since sine is y, what is cosine? Cosine is x. That helps us determine what cosine negative 315 is. Cosine negative 315 is the x coordinate, which is root 2 over 2. Now with the cosine, we can find out what secant is. Secant theta is the reciprocal of cosine. So uh, secant theta, secant theta in this case is negative 315, is going to be 
um, the same as cosecant because sine and cosine are exactly the same. Okay, so all we just have to do is copy down the simplified form of cosecant 315, which is root 2. Moving along, let's take a look at the last two. We have tan theta is the reciprocal of sine and cosine, so it's sine theta is y over x. So tan negative 315 is going to be the y coordinate, roots 2 over 2, divided by the x coordinate, root 2 over 2. We're dividing to identical numbers, so our, our quotient is going to be 1. All right, how about cotangent theta? Cotangent is the reciprocal of tan, um, x over y, or you can think about it as cosecant over secant. Um, so we're going to use that to determine what cotangent negative 315 is. Okay, so we're finding the quotient of two identical terms again, so we're going to be looking for root 2 over 2 divided by root 2 over 2, or we can just reciprocate 1. What's the reciprocal of 1? The reciprocal of 1 is just 1. Okay, so you just have 1 over 1, and you have 1, or whichever way you want to do it. That's your answer. Okay, so let's go ahead and organize our answers in a nice list. Um, sine of negative 315 is root 2 over 2. It's cosecant of negative 315 is root 2. Cosine of negative 315 is root 2 over 2. Secant of negative 315 is root 2. Tan of negative uh, 315 is just 1. And then cotangent of negative 315 is 1. Okay? So these are the answers, the six trig functions for theta equals um, negative 315 degrees using the unit circle from memory. I'd like to thank you so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. If the contents of this tutorial helped you in your study of the unit circle, do give us a thumbs up. Your positive feedback is very valuable to us. If you have any questions or comments about the contents of this tutorial or any um, pre-calc concepts in general, just uh, place your questions in the comments section below and we'll be more than glad to support you. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for updates to other tutorials such as this. More clips can be found on mathgutserve.com. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day. Goodbye.